But I know you're really anxious to actually get into the nitty gritty of editing on Vegas and moving things around and cutting them and doing all kinds of things. So let's start with a real quick overview of how all that works. So let's go ahead and start with a new project. So the Vegas interface is divided in half, basically. You have the timeline, which is where the media is placed and manipulated. And opposite that are your various windows. There's a bunch of tabs showing you the Explorer by default and uh, the master audio mixer and the preview. Now, if your windows aren't arranged this way or you want to start over again, you can close Vegas and reopen it while you hold the shift and control keys and that will boot everything up into the default configuration. For instance, if your timeline is on the top and not on the bottom, that's one of the preferences we can set. So let's go to Options, Preferences, and go over to the Display tab. Near the bottom you see this check mark by display timeline at bottom of main window and if I uncheck that and click on apply you can see that they swap positions the timeline is now on the top which had been the default configuration for all the versions previous the Vegas Pro 8. I like the timeline on the bottom so I'm going to check that again and hit apply and put that to where it was. But before I drop this AVI file onto the timeline, I want to make sure that the project properties are set to match my media. So I'm going to go over to the project properties button here, the little blue button, or you can hit alt and enter. At the very top of the video tab, it's defaulted to NTSC DV. Now NTSC is the color system that we use in North America. If you're in a country that uses PAL and you're working in PAL, you want to choose one of the PAL options or maybe you're working in HDV, you have options for that as well. But the idea is to set it to match your media, or at least set it to match most of the media you're using if you're using a variety of different types. So I'm going to grab this video and put it on a timeline. Now, keep your finger on the mouse button. You can just see this outline of the video and audio before it's actually dropped in. And notice in this case that this is a fairly lengthy piece of media and it extends beyond our view in the timeline here. But when I let go of the mouse, a few things are going to happen here. One will be it's going to create audio and video tracks because there aren't any now. And the video and audio have to live in tracks on the timeline. And also the timeline is going to resize to fit this whole piece of media in it. So I'm going to let go of the button. And all those things I said would happen actually happen. So the timeline has resized the zoom factor basically. And we have created a video track and an audio track. Now one thing you may notice, depending on how fast your computer is and how long the media is, it's going to take a moment to create the waveforms that we see here on the timeline. And while that's happening, it's just going to say building peaks in the audio space there while it's doing that. So now that we have the media in a timeline, and from this point on, this media is going to be called a timeline event, because any individual element on the timeline we refer to as an event. So let's zoom in and out. And the easiest way to zoom in and out is to use your mouse scroll wheel. Or also you can use the up and down arrows on your keyboard. And the more media you add to the timeline, the handier that's going to be to be able to get a wide view and then zoom in to get a closer view to do some work on a particular area. So I'm going to add some more media here. Let's take this factory clip. I'm going to drop it in to the right of the event already in the timeline. And again, the timeline will move out to include the new event there. And again, we can zoom in and out. Now the place that it zooms in and out to is really determined by the cursor, which is the flashing black vertical line here. And the cursor functions as a playhead. And if we just click in a different spot on the timeline, the cursor will move. And now when the zoom happens, it's going to be centered around where the cursor is.